Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and today we're going to take a look at J. Ray the Red Gestures Tile Morphs Volume 1 Asset Pack for Smile Game Builder. Uh, before we begin, I have created a new project, and all I've really done is I've stamped down some template maps. Uh, so before we get into the DLC, the uh, asset pack, I want to show you exactly what I did to create this. In, in case you didn't know, when you add a new map, you have this handy button in the upper right corner for use template. If you click that, you have access to two separate folders, maps and battle maps. And you can click on any of these. You can kind of see the bird's eye view of all of them and add them to your list. And they are just pre-made maps that you can use for your project. So if you're lacking a little bit of inspiration, you need some motivation to make your own map, whether it's for your world or for a battle background or anything else, you can just click on one of these pre-made maps. Then you can populate it with your own assets, your own tiles, tile sets, uh, your own events, anything you want. You can make them bigger, smaller, take things out. They're just maps that are pre-made for you. Uh, I've done that with this ice cave here, as well as this temple. Nothing too fancy, uh, but definitely time-saving in that these are just here, provided for you, built for you. You can see that this one has stairs and an apparent exit already here. Not evented in, but definitely eventable. So, just something I wanted to point out. Now, I put the grassland down here because this tile set, the tile morphs asset pack, volume one is going to consist of the grassland biome. So, to do this, to add these assets to our game, now that I've made this new project, we're going to do like we do with anything else. We're going to go to Add Assets. And then we'll go over to the Maps tab and the Objects tab. Even though these are going to be on the ground tiles, as it were, they are being imported as objects. The objects are going to overlay the tiles on the ground. So we're not using them as tiles. We're using them as objects, and they are going to appear as tiles. Uh, another way of saying that is we're using these objects as tiles. <laughs> but anyway, it'll all become clear soon. We're going to click on Add, and I'm going to navigate to my Downloads folder. Now here it is, the BEST, the Great Forest. BEST being the uh, name that J. Ray wanted to name this, I think, before deciding on Tile Morphs. I think Tile Morphs is a better name myself, but it doesn't matter. It's still a great asset pack either way. Uh, and I've been kindly provided with two separate packs here, Forest and Plants Forever. So let's go ahead and grab, we'll just grab both of them and we'll check them both out at the same time. I'm going to leave this checkbox when it's importing FBX files, it executes optimization automatically. I'm leaving the scale alone. I'm just going to click add and 118 objects have been imported. That's, that wasn't bad. So we have in our possession several, several different assets. The tragedy here is that in the engine, back face culling is not supported during runtime, but when you're previewing them, the back face culling is supported so we can see through the textures from behind. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Let's make this bigger so it's easier for you to see. It's a rookie mistake on my part. These are terrains that are high resolution, they're beautifully textured, and they're seamless. And they are given a naming convention that is very simple, easy to understand. And I love, 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 love the way that this is set up because of its seamlessness and because of its flexibility. That's extremely important. The flexibility here, which I'm going to demonstrate for you very soon. Very, very important. All of these tiles can be set for passability. Uh, so that's gonna be on us as the developer to set them. But I believe the official release is going to come with a project file so that you will have all of these set with passability settings already. And that being the case, you won't have to do any additional work. If you want to provide this asset pack to your game project, you can always use the merge project tool and then you still won't have to 
mess with any of the passability settings. So we have over a hundred different configurations of, of land here. And I'm going to go over the naming conventions real quick before we continue. You can see here we have DDDD, uh, names like DGDR, DRRD. What does this mean? Well, if you go to DDDD and we take a look at this, this entire unit, this entire, we'll, we'll call it a tile, a morphed tile. Uh, it's really separated arbitrarily into four sections, the upper left, the upper right, the bottom left, and the bottom right. And D, 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 D means dirt. So the first D is the upper left, the second D is the upper right, the third D is the bottom left, and the fourth D is the bottom right to indicate at a glance before, without even having to click on it rather, that this is going to be a tile consisting of all dirt. Uh, so if I click D, G, 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 that's going to mean that the dirt is in the upper left corner and the other three quadrants are going to contain grass. So let's click on that, see if I'm right. I was right. Now it is a little bit, it's pretty grassy here, but it does contain dirt. And uh, it's got a bit of a drop off too. So we have variation immediately. Uh, DRRG, is that dirt, rock, rock, grass? Yes, I believe so. The gray, sticky, uppy areas being the rock in this example. Uh, so I see G's, R's, and D's. Now, coming down to the bottom section of this file list, we have a W dash DDDW. What do you think the W stands for? I'm actually not 100% sure. I did guess it was going to mean water. Let's see if that's the case here. I think that the inclusion of the W dash at the beginning means that this is intended to be used with the water. Uh, but we'll we'll confirm that. So W dash R R D D center uh, waterfall rock rock dirt dirt and there is a center cutout to allow for additional details. There's our water. We have a water that is placed below about one block. A water that is placed uh, less than one block below the surface level. We have animated waterfalls. You know what? That's enough looking at this. Let's actually go onto the map and place this stuff down. Oh, before we forget, we'll take a quick glance at Plants Forever. We only have seven files to look at. We've got new shrub, and you can tell this is high res but low poly because this is a lot of just flat planes, so you're not going to have any issues with things loading onto your map just because it's a bunch of foliage. They'll be very fast to load. Oh. That is one of the prettiest plant assets I have seen for Smile Game Builder. That is lush. And you know that these plant assets will go with this terrain pack because it is made by the same developer. Here we have some shrubs you can walk through. And I think it would be useful to test to see if these are congruent with some of the existing Smile Game Builder assets. It won't be with all of them. Here's a massive amount of tulip shrub shrubbery and we'll test to see if it's congruent with uh, Jackson's smile game builder assets all right cool we close that and we will start placing things down how many tabs do we get just the forest and now we have these useful thumbnails we can actually see everything actually the smart thing to do would be to start off in a map that doesn't have any different elevations so actually, I should have started off with that to begin with. Let's let's actually just put a default map down and go stand. We'll just touch grass, okay? And I think I'm gonna stick around in perspective mode. We'll change different view modes to see how things look. All right, now the first thing I wanna do is just start laying down one particular tile. I kind of deviated from that with this one, but I'm gonna show you why J. Ray calls this seamless. So you can already see that there are no seams between any of these tiles. They are truly seamless. Uh, but what would happen if we were to select this tile, for example, and rotate it? It would continue to be seamless due to the nature of the textures. They are thoroughly tested. And we can rotate this again, and now we have our rock in the upper left corner instead of the bottom right. So you have a truly 
seamless system, which is highly, highly versatile and almost endlessly so. And now we can work on replacing different parts of this map just to kind of see. First thing I'm gonna do is this is 29 and it needs to be 27 by 27 just to cut out those default grass tiles. I don't want to see those. Perfect. Now I can delete some of the tiles I've already used, place some new ones down. See what happens if we delete those three and we place the same one that we placed down, but this time we rotate those. Do they match up? And the answer is they do, and they match up beautifully. This is the culmination of a ton of work, and it shows strong, strong framework. Delete those and place down the whole wall. Rotate that. Awesome. Awesome. And I found the tile that will represent the plateau for that. All right, so I've been able to make a grassy land and a rocky plateau. We can kind of see what the plants forever look like. These assets are massive, by the way, just absolutely huge. And our, our little guys are going to be so small walking through all of this. I don't know that the assets for the plants were intended to be that big, but I don't mind because it's it provides a lot of shade and foliage for the map and it gives it a bit of character. All right, all right, let's start over and make a new map. I've given myself a completely transparent map by importing my own transparent tile. And now I just want to see what I can accomplish. And if you feel like you can't get that quite centered where it needs to be, you can control Z to undo, as I have done there. Awesome seems to be working out. Now we need this to be seamless, and there we go. We're, we are reaching critical seamless levels. Yep, and in no time at all, I'm creating a seamless map. This one, some of these configurations won't be compatible with one another just due to the elevation settings being different. Uh, so you'll have to find where the elevation settings are the same. And the elevation of each individual element, such as the apparent walls of the bank or the cliffs or whatever you'd like to call them, are going to need to be set by you. Otherwise, your player is just going to kind of walk through everything on their own. And then sometimes when you're building a map, kind of like I am, you might be left with uh, some challenges as to how to fill in the blanks. It's totally on me. I, I think I'll do that like this. Kind of take the cheap way out. Then with that there, I have created another map in almost no time at all. Beautifully done. And we should be able to get to work setting things like elevation. But what I'm going to do in this instance, let's go ahead and set myself a start position and test play. I'm eager to see how this looks. Now our character is... <laughs> He's an A style. Okay, and we can change that, of course, but uh, this is what we look like on the map. Uh, up, up, I got a spot that I'm going to need to plug up, and perhaps, perhaps J Ray will be able to accommodate this in some way, allow us to have some vertical assets. Uh, that would be a lot to ask for, though. So, really, it's going to be on us to make sure we design our maps intelligently with these flexible tools that are provided. This is a very powerful way to make maps because like I said it's versatile it's flexible these can go in so many different configurations and ways in order to give you lots and lots of different terrain and you don't have to do just like a three by three grid of these like I did you can place these across a huge map my map is 27 by 27 okay your map can be 256 tiles. It does not need to be this small. The other really cool thing about this a system like this is that it takes little to no effort at all for you to be able to edit the textures for these assets. So to illustrate this, let's actually do that real quick. So we're in paint.net and this is one of the actual 
textures for the asset pack. You could literally overwrite this beautiful texture with whatever you desired, whatever your project needs required, and it would still have the same shape when you sat it down onto the map. Obviously, this might require some careful planning on your part if you are thinking about replacing the visual, the, the texture portion of this asset, but you know, done carefully enough, it can be done. This, for example, this is seamless. The uh, south facing edge is going to line up perfectly with the east, west, and north facing edges. So if you want them to continue to be seamless, you would take this into consideration when you are editing your tiles, but it can be done and that contributes a lot to the flexibility of this asset pack. Also, it's worth noting, there are actually not that many files in here. There's not as many texture files. 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87. Here's the one for the water feature. Now that I've gotten these tiles down, I would love to throw some water in there, and I just wonder how, how easy that is, how viable that is. It's actually not too bad. I was able to throw some water down there and another one there and that's pretty seamless we can take our objects and move them although if i do move it i'm gonna have to elevate it again so that fills up the blanks and then yeah our our water feature is uh, it's still it's still a little bit off but yeah there is a lot to learn about how to implement the system it isn't done yet uh j ray doesn't have it released for reasons so We'll see. I'm going to be covering more of this as I get more information and or when the official release is available for us to purchase. And that, I believe, is a wrap for this map. Didn't take very long to put together at all. It is made of high resolution assets, low poly, but you really wouldn't be able to tell. And it looks fantastic. This is one biome out of the planned eight that the red gesture is making. This is just the grassland. So if things start to look a little repetitive and you've done all you can to stretch these assets out to make a bunch of maps for your game, there are actually seven completely different other biomes that he has in the works. This was just a sample provided to me to be able to show you today. So I hope you're as excited as I am to get your hands on the full release. So before we go, as promised, I'm going to import a couple of assets from Jackson Mara's Infinity Pack the tents, the crates, and the pennants. We've got 37 objects we're adding right in. And uh, here we are with just a smidgen of Jackson's numerous assets, which I acquired from purchasing his infinity pack. I think they go together perfectly. I don't see an issue with this at all. The crates just mesh extremely well with the forest, the pennants, the stalls. Everything looks great together, except for my mistaken little holes where things are kind of exposed, but I'll get better at that over time. This can make amazing maps. Uh, but that's all the time I have for now. Thank you very much to J. Ray the Red Jester for showing this off. This is a landmark asset pack in Smile Game Builder history, and I see very good things to come with this. So thank you all very much for watching. Please comment down below whatever you'd like. I respond to those. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I will see you tomorrow, and bye for now.